are you? Welcome to Night Tiger Comics. Today is the Golden Age Jungle Book Comic Book Hall. For you of the male species out there, I suggest um, a cup of cold water next to you to splash on your face. Or you just might be taking some cold showers before the end of this video. So, I thought I picked up some books with my COVID money. And instead of just showing those five books, I thought, you know, it's been years since I shared my good girl jungle girl comic book haul and so i thought i could relive the glory days and share some of that with you so this video will definitely probably ain't gonna be 15 minutes even though i would love it to be but this is a channel about comic book addictions and no addict can get his fix in 15 minutes so i hope you'll hang to the end with me so here we got Jungle Stories, uh, what number is that? I forget. Ugh. It's from 1953, though, with Kigor, the Jungle Lord. Of course, everybody was ripping off Tarzan back in the 19, or the 1930s. Here in the middle, we got Thundar, number five, or A183 from Magazine Enterprises. That's also from 1953. And then here, this is an important book. You can find this in the dollar bin all day long. Sheena, Queen of the Jungle 3D, number one. What's important about it is Jerry Iger gives a detailed history of the creation of Sheena in the back covers. Really great. And we're going to talk about that. So where did this name come from? Sheena? It came from a derivative of a word called, of a, a word that was Sheeny which was actually derogatory towards immigrant female Jewish women in the 1940s. And actually, he, so when he came up with the name, they didn't really let anybody really know where it came from because it was kind of like maybe similar to the word like a whore or, or something like that. So it wasn't very nice. So he said he kept it secret for a while. This is an Atlas book from 19 nothing because I don't have it on there. So obviously it's from the 50s, low grade. I picked this up at a Comic Con years ago for pennies. Just a really nice Jungle Girl, Good Girl cover right there. And that is Lorna of the Jungle number nine. Anyways, there was a European tabloid size magazine called Wags. In 1937 or 8 or something like that. And the owner of that asked, approached Jerry Iger because he had it was called Jerry Iger Shop, where he uh, employed a lot of the Golden Age artists of that day to come up with the Tarzan ripoff for the Wags magazine. This is another magazine, Enterprises. Bob Powell cover, also from the A1 series, number 14. And Let's see, it's number uh, 125 in the A1 series, but this is uh, Gardner Fox on scripts and Bob Powell on the art. So we approached Jerry about doing a Tarzan ripoff for his WAGS um, tabloid magazine. But Jerry explained to the owner that he only does original material. He doesn't copy other people's works, even in ripoffs. So he went back, he said, let me come up with an, uh, an original character. And then he went home, brainstormed for a while and came up with, he said, let's do a female, a jungle uh, lead. It's never been done yet. And the owner was really impressed with that. And then, of course, he came up with the name Sheeny, I mean, Sheena. And then Sheena was born. So this is Cave Girl number 12. So that would make that 122 in the A1 series. Again, Bob Powell on cover interiors and uh, Gardner Fox on the scripts. You could just be able to pick these up for $25 every now and then. Now, it's people are wanting 100 
even in low grade for these. And they are kind of scarce. I don't think uh, A1 Enterprise has had a really big print run compared to the other bigger publishers. So the first few issues of Jumbo Magazine were the same size as WAGs. They were big tabloid size. And they reprinted all the WAGs uh, appearances of Sheena. And then, of course, then Fiction House started doing their original material. This is a Fiction House, number 53. 1947 with Tiger Girl on the cover. I just love how her outfit matches the tigers over there. I don't know who does this cover. It is beautiful, though. It is beautiful. So that's pretty much Sheena's um, history in a nutshell. Pretty good story. He talks about... Um, Oh, I'm going to have a brain fart right now. The guy who created the spirit, he was working for Iger for a while, but he could no longer afford him because... Oh, why can't I think of his name? And I know you guys will tell me, and I know what it is, I just can't think of it, but he, with the spirit, really became a really popular and in-demand artist. His work was way... as in demand, the spirit was doing well, and uh, so Jerry Argers commented, kind of humorous, how he couldn't afford him anymore. So we got a Fox feature comic here, Zago Jungle Prince. Kind of a strange layout to the cover, but nevertheless, extremely cool, extremely sexy. And it's weird, you'll go through these and you'll see a lot of the outfits will go over the belly button, like right here, right here. But then you'll get other issues where they're wearing like almost the bikini bottom. And I don't know if that had anything to do with editors or they were told, hey, make sure they're not too skimpy. They can wear bras, but they can't wear panties. I don't know. Okay. If you want to take a break, splash some cold water on your face right now. Go ahead. I'll, I'll wait while you look at that. Zago Jungle Prince. This is from 1948. These Fox books, man, they're expensive now. I think low grades go average on average 100 bucks. Speaking of that. We have from August 1948, Jojo, the Congo King, and his bow. Very cool. We got these crocodiles over here. And then we have this girl over here. Forget about Jojo. So if you know in, in Africa, in South America, they have crocodiles, even in Australia. But here in the States, in parts of um, northern South America, they have alligators. And you can tell the difference of them because their snouts on the crocs are a lot narrower. And there are other differences, too. That's a, just a gorgeous cover. You can see how they tried to make the flesh tone with two different inks. And some of those covers, they just it came out way too pink. So we're back to a fiction house. This is Wings Comics, which I didn't put the date on it. Looks like a, maybe a jungle, but not necessarily a jungle girl. So I thought this one will make it in here. A princess of some type. She's got a crown there. And there you go. Number 86. This one I just bought this year. I thought I could slip this one in here again. Who knows if it's jungle related, but she's wearing a swimsuit and she's underwater. So I thought that would go ahead and fit in here. I love that cover. I actually had this on my watch list for quite a while. Finally got my uh, second COVID and I said I'm going to pull the trigger on this sucker. Love it. Love the blues and the greens in the background. Just a really great cover. 
and this is number one, or volume three, number one, which we'll probably put that at number what? 24, 25. So that they volume these by years. So that would be 36. It would be 24 issues. And then the next one, so you have 25. So every year it was a new volume. And then they started with a new number. A lot of, a lot of issues uh, series did that. And then they abandoned that later. Because it got too confusing. But they did that to get some discounts from the post office. I got this one for 25 bucks. I don't remember if it was an auction or I think it was a buy it now. And you can see this is from 1943. And I saw this on auction in pretty much a similar grade and it went for over $200. I was like, what the heck did I stumble into right here? But you'll, you'll see a theme among Jungle Girl comics a lot where you'll have the girl bound up and then you'll have a witch doctor. So, and, and it's weird that witch doctors always really look very similar. They have a similar masks. And you'll see, because I think I have another one in here. So this is Ibis the Invincible. This is a Fawcett comic. Obviously, it's from 1943. And it has 68 pages of thrilling Ibis Adventures. This one I picked up because I saw it on Alex the Comic Hoarders a video a couple years ago. It's Paul Norris. Paul Norris was uh, the artist for Aquaman uh, in the showcase run in his, re in his reappearance into the Silver Age. Just a really cool underwater girl's got her foot caught in a giant clam. This, I picked it up for 25 bucks. It's a really low grade. I just wanted to have this cover. It's some of these books are so dynamic, the artist. And this is from Standard Comics, but it also says down here, this is a King Features comic. So, which is it? Featuring Mysterious Island. And that is from 1949 of July. So, another Fawcett book from 1955. This is called Zoo Funnies. I know, it's a weird title, huh? And actually, it was a humor book. Volume 2 was a humor book. Um, and Volume 3, I think the first three or four issues were humor books. Then it started doing the Nokia, the Jungle Girl. And that was Fawcett, so a lot of her cover appearances, she's fully dressed. This was what I call fully dressed right here. But there are some good covers in this run, no doubt. And that's number nine. And I think somebody chewed it right there. Okay, do you guys need a cold water splash? Not yet. You might after this next one. So we got August 1948, number 57. Another Fight Comics. No, did I do a Fight Comics? I think that last one was Wings. Yeah, that was Wings. Now we got Fight. Fight number 57. With Tiger Girl and a whip in her hand, Tiger on the cover, and I I did some research on these Spike comics. The early early issues had superheroes in them, and I would love to get one of those. This is a signature signature series by Tammy W. If you can see that over there, but a pretty decent copy. And uh, I was picking these up a couple of years ago, and you can get them for twenty five thirty. Now you're averaging whew, like seventy to a hundred. Is that a Joe Doolin? I don't think that is a Joe Doolin. He has a unique look. This next one. This next one. Uh, I want to say it's a Matt Baker. September 1949. Number 129. Jungle Comics. Mm, that looks like a Matt Baker to me. I didn't research this one. Just a beautiful cover. The, the colors are just so vibrant on these. And it has a date stamp, uh, August 22nd, 1950. I love date stamps on books. I think it adds to the character.
This book I got for $12. This is March 1947. Okay, so it was 17 with shipping. I couldn't believe it. This book is expensive now. It's number 87. And simply because that she's tied up in, in a really big foreground uh, picture, this book goes for quite a bit of money. It's, it's in demand because of the bondage. And then you got the witch doctor over here. And that is a great cover, though, no doubt about it. She's tied up with leather thong throngs, you call them. And I just want to stare at this one. So this was $17. You know, as soon as I saw that, I was like, no brainer. I'm on it. I'm on the case. Trying to get my fix. Okay, here, splash some water in your face. Cool off a little bit. Do what you got to do so we can move on. So this next cover is definitely a Joe Duel one. You can tell right away. I'll leave that there. Okay, you guys ready? You relaxed? This is number uh, 136, June 1950. Jungle Comics. So you got... Double, you got bondage in the background. You got Sheena in the foreground. You can tell that this is definitely a Joe Doolin. I don't, I can tell by the faces on the females. Really nice looking cat. That is a great looking cover. Very clean, very simple, very sexy. She's wearing her one piece outfit in this one. And the girl behind her is not. What more can I say about this, guys? Splash of water. Let's move on. All right. This is uh, number 119. And I didn't put the date on it. She's got her onesie right there. She busted her chains. And she's going to take down this, this dude right here. Now, I don't know what kind of skull that is. Is that like a rat or something? But another beautiful cover. I don't know who did this one. Love the Crocs. And love those legs. Sheena. Those legs just go on all day long. It has a dealer mark on it right here. Beautiful yellow background. Oh, yeah. I'm going to splash some water in my face. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is um, Dave Stevens' cover. I didn't mention that over here. All right, moving on and moving on. June 1948, number 112. Sometimes I put Gerber numbers. This is a Gerber 4. Another nice sheeny, Sheena with some baboons on it. Love her ankle bracelets. Those are sexy. Oh, yeah. So here she comes swinging into the book. Baboon's like, come on, bring it on, Biage. And yes, splash, splash. Whoa. All right. I love baboons, That those vibrant colors on their skin. It's so cool. This is one of my favorites. I believe this is a Matt Baker. This is March 1946. Jumbo Comics number 85. Full display. Nice dynamic to that one. That really, that one on the newsstand, when you saw that one, you were just buying it. You probably just bought it subconsciously as a kid. You're like, whoa. Gotta have that. I don't know why. Something stern inside. And this book is really making me Thirsty for a splash of water. Great, even covering up the trade dress. Really love that. And I'm going to dub that. That's a, that definitely looks like a Matt Baker to me. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Okay, here we go. We are moving on, people. Moving on. All right. We have, from May 1945, Jumbo Comics number 75. And you got the Witch Doctor 
with the horns. Now you got male bondage on the cover. I can do without that. We have a signature series up here on the leg. She's got her leg, her anklets on, and the knife's out, and she's ready to kick some ass. Oh yeah, I love it. Okay, splash that water. Devil Horns, Terror Trail of the Devil Horns, Action, Adventure, and Mystery. Don't you wish you were that guy right there? This one is a Canadian edition. So the actual number on this is 123, but this says number three, and this is from 1949. Now, supposedly this edition is like super super scarce there was one listed on ebay for three grand now i don't know if that's the value of the book you can put it on you can put any book on ebay put any price you want but i've had several community members tell me how scarce this book is and i am always looking out for canadian editions because i do know that they are more scarce that is one heck of a cover, though. I love it. Dang it. And the cat is even chained up, so why does she have to kill it? Look, you could see the chain and it's taunt. I guess that was a, a mistake on the artist's part because the cats uh, over there are loose. Instead of going after the loose cat, she's going after the one that's uh, chained up. But you cannot deny... This is a beautiful cover, and this does look like a Matt Baker. He just has something that brings these women to life, especially in the eyes. Not a bad copy either. Not a bad copy. Okay, splash some water. Let's move on, guys. You need a minute? Anybody want to smoke a cigarette? We can take a break. Okay, we'll take a break. Okay, did you finish your cigarette? Okay, so the next, let me see here. The next six books are the ones that I just picked up recently. So we're going to kick them off with a Fox Features Jungle Joe number two from 1950. Now, let me tell you my thought process. I I was going to either buy one huge book for $300. And then I decided, let me go ahead and pick up six smaller books that equal $300. But I wanted high grades. I did not want spine splits. I did not want trims. And I did not want missing centerfolds. So I spent a good 15 hours on eBay and on my comic shop, going back and forth, reading descriptions, looking uh, through listings to find the best copies for the best price. So these next six that I got equaled $320 some dollars with shipping. Some were from my comic shop and then some were from eBay. This was an eBay purchase. Uh, the Fox Good Girl Jungle Girl books on there are extremely expensive. I think I paid $80 for this 2.5 copy. And there were other copies that were a little bit cheaper, but they had more damage on the cover. So I settled on this one. I think I did well. It looks beautiful. She's right there in the forefront. You can see her belly button. She got her bikini on. And yeah, she's rocking that cover. All right. Psh, psh. Oh, you know what? I didn't think about it. I should have got me a misting bottle. That would have helped me a little bit quicker. Okay, so another, this next one is a, Joe, a John Forte cover. This is assumed to be done in the Iger Studios, and I paid $32.50 for this 5.0 from 1949. Nice copy. I don't know. I would actually put it at like a 6 or 6.5. But I like that people uh, grade, undergrade their books. 
really cool cover nice and clean and yeah i just love it mm. he's about to bite some leg right there Ooh, that's gonna hurt all right if you're ready we can move on so this was the second one that i bought so i'm gonna put these over here show them all together and just show you how much i got yeah this one I showed this one, and a lot of people are like, I've not seen this one before. This is number 100 from 1948. It's a 5.0 also on a John Salrado cover. I just love the dynamics of it, of, of her right there. There were a lot to choose from. So to determine which covers were the best, in my opinion, took, took well all of that. 15 hours of searching going back and forth and and just getting that feeling you know that comical feeling like oh yeah that's the one and this is one of the ones that i just love to cover we're gonna get up on these some closer i'm gonna get a close up on these uh other ones at the end well you know what why don't i do them individually so that i don't have to do them all back go back so there you go cold shower 10. we don't need to see that part you just want to see that now this one out of all of them was the least dynamic for me but it was a really nice looking copy for the price yeah we're getting down to a half hour so i'm gonna have to we only got three books left, guys. So we got now we have Jungle Comics number 92, August 47. This is a Joe Doolin cover. This is another one that I showed on, on Instagram, and people were like, holy crap, I have never seen that one before. The orange on the outfit of hers, and then her legs are so tan. It, it She looks really great. And I'll bring that one closer. You can see what I mean. Look at the look at the coloring on that leg. It just looks like she's tan. And the oranges. This is number 92. If you want to get this one. This is one I recommend that you get. Yeah, okay, where's that cold water at? Last, oh, no, I was hoping I couldn't do that the whole video. Okay. Okay, the last two we have Jungle Comics number 46. I mean, sorry, number 91, September 46. This has a Matt Baker Sky Girl story in it. Um, this. Now, this one has. Now, this is an older one. The Jumbo Comics are a little bit more pricey. And so this one had new staples put into it right there. I had to determine that in, in, in buying this, but I, I'm going to remove those actually. But it is a nice copy. And for the price, I think I paid $50 for this. Beautiful book. And look, like I said, it's a really nice copy. So there are other ones missing like a piece of cover or maybe had one staple detached or, like I said, didn't have centerfold or were trimmed. So I could deal with the staples on this because I know I could take them out. And that's why I decided to go with this copy right here. I'm still looking at a couple issues of Sheena herself, the title. Because that was a, a much shorter run. I think it was only like eight books or something. And so they're a little bit more, like, harder to get and more expensive. So if you can get a Sheena title, go for it. Okay, last but not least, you get the shower on. Because this one has some side boob in it. And I will admit, that's why I did buy this copy. You don't, you can see it here. 
But in not any of these other comics will you see the cleavage like that. And this is the only one out of... I looked at every cover and this was the only one that had the cleavage showing. This is number 73. And this is from June or March 1995. It's a Joe Doolin cover. Has Matt Baker. Sky Girl. This actually has a detached cover. And it's a 3.0. So I can I can attach the cover again, but it's a, just a beautiful copy. And I'm going to leave you with this one. So this is Night Tiger Comics. Thanks for hanging around, checking out some side boobs and some Jungle Girl action here at the Night Tiger Comic Book Lab. Thank <laughs> you.